John Paris from Connecticut. And my session is going to look at a very different topic than we may have discussed so far today, which is the teacher shortage phenomena, which is an international debate <clears throat> excuse me, that needs major attention. So I hope it's been a beneficial uh, workshop so far and see what we can do. Obviously, uh, I have got a, an extensive background training educators and consulting, um, primarily in Connecticut, mostly urban blue collar kind of communities. So much of what I'm going to share today will reflect that kind of history and background. So let's examine the two priorities for the session. Again, allowing that this is a condensed version and it's going to require some thinking beyond the moment, so to speak. So I'm going to take a look at the first few points. And it's essential that the audience try to anticipate any personal aspects of this topic, whether you're an educator, an administrator, just a concerned citizen, uh, a professor who's training uh, educators, because I do think this is probably an underestimated concern that we need to be uh, conscious of. Right. So now you understand I have to use data primarily from the United States. So whatever you're about to see here, I'm going to use that as kind of the foundation, but I will share observations that I've gathered through the research uh, on this topic that's international. So just within the US, which is representative of other countries, there's a dramatic decrease and people pursuing education as a career. Uh, I think this is a traumatic dilemma that needs major attention. And the primary reason is the uh, item outlined in red at the base. Uh, most of the research suggests that the lack of professional opportunities once in the profession uh, seems to be a major deterrent because of economics, salaries, the lucrative aspects of other careers. So I think if I look through all the data so far, that point seems to be to constantly surface. And it's a function of the fact that we don't treat educators with the same respect or uh, professionalism that other, that other activities uh, employ. All right, so that's just kind of a setting. Now, all this data is 2019 and into 20. Uh, anyone who's re researched this topic, I think it's going to be quite surprising. Just in the United States alone, 15% of the educational educators sorry, in uh, the profession leave annually. That's a staggering number of people. And unfortunately, if you move down to teacher shortages, this is a primary predictor of this estimation that there's going to be a 200,000 teacher shortage in five years. And that's going to reflect all the data that I'm about to share with you as we proceed. Either way, this is a serious topic. And I don't think, as, as I mentioned, educators as a whole have given this much thought, particularly in communities that have a constant turnover of staff which is prevalent in almost every uh, major society. All right, now, what are some of the stressors that are impacting teachers in the field, which are obviously going to affect those entering the profession? These are also recent statistics, and without delving into them because of time, look where it says 21% of teachers rate the reality of teaching as stressful, just a sheer fact of being an educator, confronting the daily rigors and demands of the, of the job, talking to X number of students daily, and managing their personal issues, that alone seems to be a major contributor to teacher stress. And looking below the bottom line there, these again are rather startling statistics. About 60% of teachers in the United States suggest that they are often or always stressed on a daily basis. And that translates to the next statistic. 
this is causing significant mental health stresses that need to be managed or ameliorated. And again, we're going to translate this into why this is a, on a global basis. Look at this carefully. Consider where you are in the global environment. Think about this reality if it applies to your circumstance. Now, I did find some recent studies on um, international data. So if you could take a quick glance, I want to highlight two of them. In the UK, 600,000 students are considered to receive education on a daily basis by unqualified teachers. Those are individuals who lack necessary certification or professional preparation. This is obviously most severe in math and science, which is universal across the globe. Uh, look at Africa and Nigeria. 380,000 shortage in 2015. That's just one country within the continent. Think about that. Moving to the right, South Asia. I just found this literally two days ago. They anticipate a 15 million teacher shortage this decade between 2020 and 2030. That number is mind boggling. It's almost not logical. And now that totals 26 million shortage estimation, 2030. Needless to say, this is a statistic that is shockingly overwhelming and needs major attention. So just to give you a, a scan of a variety of different locations. Now I'm going to move into factors that I think are contributing to this serious teacher shortage issue across the globe. So again, if you can personalize it in your relationships with your communities, your countries, your status, and your role, I think it's fair to say, oh, by the way, all of this is research-based. I should initiate that point. There's a dramatic shift in student, student demographics, cultural, language, racial, social, economic, uh, we certainly are aware of that across any civilized society. That's increased, That's a measure of the increase of students who are arriving at school with multiple learning and social behavioral challenges. So that population in the United States is at least about 12 to 13 percent. And I think it's increasing rapidly. The bottom on the left, a lot of schools are still uh, using conventional teaching with teacher-directed learning, passive instruction, question and answer kind of inter in interactions, workbooks, dittos, all of that to me tr clearly is not going to be appealing to the younger generation of teachers that are coming. Last one on the bottom right, I think we're certainly aware across the globe this is a serious issue. In the United States, this is a dramatic problem. Many, many communities do not have resources, especially the use of the internet, which is going to affect virtual learning. So again, remember, these are stereotypes, but all research-based. Try the next group of slides. Uh, everyone seems to be kind of fixated and rather committed to going to distant or e-learning. In our country, it's become kind of the absolute uh, path considering the issues with the coronavirus and teachers concerned about going back to school, which is another topic, obviously. And moving to the right, my actual background is in classroom management. So the vast majority of my decades of experience is training teachers to manage students who have issues with social behavioral problems. So I see a decrease in general behavioral accountability across all ages, all communities, all natures of students. So this is a major concern which tends to create a lot of burnout in the younger teachers that are coming into the field. The bottom left, without starting a full debate, Certainly, we could suggest that administrators need more current research-based 
training on leadership, staff supervision, providing resources for teachers, especially regarding students who are at risk. So I'm gonna say that's certainly in flux, and this is a major predictor of why new staff do not survive for a, a longer than three or four years. And to the bottom right, all the evidence that I found so far indicates teachers need to have more consistent, predictable, professional training, which I will highlight further along. So those are what I call the major priority issues for the increase in teacher shortages. Now, because of time, I'm going to move into the actual students in the classroom. This is just a little mini proportion of the entire scope of this concern. Again, consider your circumstances, your situation, the nature of your issues with students. I see, and the data is overwhelming, a significant decrease in students, what I call readiness to learn. They're coming in with deficits in the mastery of language, basic understanding of the world environment, readiness to develop the necessary social behavioral skills to perform in school. So I think that's a, an acceptable point, which seems to be tragically increasing. Now, uh, unless you see the world differently, adults have shorter attention spans, and clearly this is going to apply to the students that are sitting in our classrooms, particularly with the overwhelming obsession with technology. And by that, short attention spans are an automatic because of immediate gratification. Of the teachers I've worked with this year in Connecticut, mostly are high school, they complain about this factor on a constant basis. The bottom left, if you combine the first two points, I think again, this is a fair statement, we see a lot of students that don't seem to have the same focus, energy, drive, ambition to excel in the classroom. You see more and more concerns about students passing through school without reaching their natural potential. This is a staggering issue in the United States. And then finally, to the bottom right, we have a significant decline in students' mastery of socialization skills, learning to cooperate, sharing, working with others, being a partner, doing collaborative projects. You can see that this is a major concern for many of the young teachers in the profession because they themselves may not represent the same maturity as teachers who began in the 90s and before. So this combination of factors is filtering into the classroom on a daily, daily basis. And I do think this is the message that young teachers are getting, which again spirals into the turnover, the absenteeism, and the shortage. All right, I chose this as a sample scenario simply because this is a real circumstance that I had to address this particular spring with a new teacher that I've been working with, uh, who is represented by Mrs. Rodriguez. Section in green is the virtual learning kind of priority that I mentioned a few slides ago. So please kind of scan through it. And at the bottom, if you kind of get the sense of this whole experience, this is a normative scenario that you could replicate from pre-K all the way up to these high school juniors. Oh, ninth grade, sorry. So now we have to consider, is this scenario going to deteriorate Mrs. Rodriguez's commitment her emotional and psychological comfort and her willingness to per pursue this career. And I'm suggesting by the sheer function of today's topic that this is a contributor that is multi being multiplied on a constant basis everywhere that I'm familiar with, at least my studies. 
All right, so use that as kind of a scenario just to lead us to the section on recommendations. If you could please just scan these four different blockage blocks or categories. We covered a bit of item one. That's more of a societal kind of concern. We have to find input to address the financial issues, the lack of career activity and movement. Uh, I would suggest looking to second career candidates could be a viable option. I myself in Connecticut train a number of those individuals on a yearly basis. Move to item two, which is much more uh, obvious if you look at the most recent graduates. Many of the young people coming into the field are lacking the three items there on the screen. They have not had sufficient field-based experience. They clearly need more training on classroom management. And what I suggested for the third point, and I'm focused on this in my own consultation, we need to help teachers understand the personal attributes that are required for you to be a success. For example, patience, being uh, caring, having empathy, knowing how to express positive emotions. I don't think teacher training programs give this sufficient attention. Moving to the right, I like item A, more and more there's evidence in all the countries that I surveyed that there's hiring people who represent talent uh, professionals who know how to attract and to appeal to hiring this generation of new people that are entering the field. We can certainly advertise in social media, that's obvious. I like item E. I think a lot of people that I've trained, which is in the few thousands, believe it or not, they have not had opportunities to visit the community where they're about to be employed. So they sit passively in an administrator's office, agree to a position, get to the actual site, and it represents all the dilemma that I've described since we started. So I like this idea of having multiple locations to visit, meet with appropriate staff, try to discuss the confirmation lines with their personality and their skills. I do think this is underestimated and it, it's an easy procedure to consider. Item four, very quickly, every district, every community, every program should have an orientation for staff. In my particular view, would be prior to school, maybe in August, depending on your location. And I would discuss the two items there, as you see, what are the policies and procedures working in this community or school, and they need training on instructional techniques and behavioral interventions. Okay, last critical slide. Item five is somewhat self-explanatory. Um, I don't think a lot of communities give attention, suf sufficient attention to clarifying what administrators' roles are, what their protocols are, how they manage the school environment, and very critically, how do you evaluate staff competence? If we can strengthen that aspect alone, you would have more compliance from teachers and longer careers. Go to six. Surprisingly, and I've researched this extensively, this is a major contributor to teacher shortages across the globe. A staggering number of environments need to be maintained, updated, replaced. The United States, they estimate it to be in the billions. So this is an area that needs immediate attention, surprisingly. So for example, am I going to work in a building that has adequate climate, resources? Is it an environment that's attractive? And of course, this translates to the student's welfare which then ultimately translates to teacher success. So again, I would say suggest number six has significance. Seven is even more critical than any point so far. Once employed, we have to nurture these young people. We have to take an early career individual and provide the four points on the screen. They need a team of colleagues. 
and they develop a collaborative teaching model where they're possibly coached or mentored by an experienced individual or team. They need to have time to meet. I call it grievance. Scheduled meetings, coffee and donuts kind of logic. Sit, talk, chat. Make this a mandatory obligation on a monthly basis. I get this feedback constantly from my young teachers. They don't feel their voices are being heard. Once they lose that sense of power and importance, Bob takes on significant negative tendencies immediately. And last for our time slot, slot uh, look at the three points here. Again, this is a major issue. You have to have ongoing, persistent, scheduled training, particularly for the younger teachers, that you can embellish their skills, particularly in the area of instruction and management. And item C, which is one of my specialties, we have to give them access to mental health training, coaching, counseling, and outside resources if necessary. We did item C, you would have a significant impact on the teacher shortage dilemma across any environment. So in terms of closure, take a quick look at these four points. We should anticipate that this is a crisis. We need to allocate a significant governmental and or local resources. And we have to make sure that we implement the strategies that I've highlighted, if nothing above and beyond. And above all, we have to target the at-risk or challenging communities who have chronic issues maintaining staff. All right. I'm going to turn it over to our host. Thank you again for this opportunity. Thanks, Felicia. Uh, thank you, Dawn. That was an amazing insight in teacher shortages. I already did. Thank you. And uh, we got a couple of responses. So this is an alarming as well. I think COVID has an impact on everyone. It's more stressful and more difficult, I think, uh, is uh, for the teacher to manage all this situation. Uh, I, I, I was surprised myself how significant it is across all the research I've studied from different countries, different environments, and I don't think this has gotten enough attention. I really don't. It's something people.